Oh, this is another quick lesson. This is going to be Geometry Chapter 2-4, Deductive Reasoning. So our topics of discussion are going to be deductive reasoning and compare that to what we previously did, inductive reasoning. And we're going to talk about the law of detachment and the law of syllogism. So inductive reasoning is when you look at whatever circumstances are happening around you, and from there you then reach a conclusion or guess as to what the next circumstance will be. So if I throw some regular um, figures, one with three sides, one with four sides, one with five sides, I wonder what the next item in the pattern is going to be. Oh, surprise, surprise, it's going to be a six-sided regular figure. So that was inductive reasoning. You're looking at what's happening. You make a guess as to what's happening in the future. Deductive reasoning is when you t are given some statements, some conjectures, and from there you logically reach a conclusion. Logic. So, the first thing we have to learn is the law of detachment, and that is if P is true and P is true is true, then Q must be true. So if we're given the statement that if it's raining, that's the P, then there are clouds in the sky, that's the Q. So if it's raining, there's got to be clouds. So let's look at all the circumstances, a truth table, of how this can all turn out. So. If it's raining and there are clouds in the sky, well, then that verifies the statement is true. If it's raining and there are no clouds in the sky, meaning Q is a not, well, then this is a false statement. Now, if it's not raining, not P, and there are clouds in the sky, that's true, because you can have clouds in the sky and it's still not have it rain. And then if it's not raining and there are no clouds in the sky, well, yeah, that's true. So we need to understand, though, is we have to focus on if P is true, then Q has to be true. So in this case, P is true, then Q has to be true. That's why this is a true statement right here. And because P is true and Q is false, that's a false statement. After that, it doesn't matter, because in each of these cases, P is not true. So therefore, it doesn't matter what happens over here for Q. All right, let's keep going. So there's a truth table about what just happened. So, and I threw some phrase, you know, some, some technical terms in there, modus ponens and modus tollens. P is true, then Q is true. There you go, it's true. Modus tollens is, is that if Q is false, not true, then P has to not be true. So here, if it's no, if there's no clouds in the sky, you can work this backwards and then conclude that it's not raining. Okay, that's a little bit beyond what we had to talk about for this lesson, but there it is. Let's keep going. Okay, another example. If you turn on the switch, then the kitchen light comes on. So if you turn the switch and the light comes on, hey, that's a true statement. If you turn the switch and the light doesn't come on, well, then we got a problem. That's a false statement. I'm going to skip this for a second. If, the, if you don't turn on the switch, then the lights aren't coming on. This is true. This makes sense. Now, this is where it gets entertaining. If the switch is off and the light still comes on, we call that a true statement because we're focusing on only if P is true, then Q is true. If P doesn't happen to be true, I don't give a darn about what happens to Q over here. So this is a little tough on the brain to handle this part. But if you rewrite the statement as an if and only if, a biconditional, then it's going to work for us. So if the switch is on, then the light's on. If the switch is off, then the light's off. Um, and also working this other way around. If the, if, well, I rewrote the sentence here, but um, I got the colors backwards. But okay, if the switch is on, then the light is on. If the light is on, then the switch must be on by conditional statement. That's because it's got the if and only if, which we learned in the previous section 2-3. Okay, law of syllogism. It's pretty straightforward. If P implies Q and Q implies R, then forget about the Q. We can go straight from then P is R. What am I talking about? We're going to put if I hike for P, I sweat for Q, and I stink for R. I know a little gross, but it's a good example. If I hike, then I sweat. If I sweat, then I stink. Then if I hike, 
then directly, I stink. Done. This only works if the order is correct. If P, then Q, and see here, if Q, then R. So these have to be right. If you switch this order here, it won't work. You have to have this commonality of Q. So P goes straight to R. All right, so I did this again with an algebra statement. That would be less gross. If 2x minus 4 is equal to 8, then you can conclude that 2x is equal to 12. If 2x is equal to 12, then x is equal to 6. So, if, so then, given these two statements, you can directly go from, if you have 2x minus 4 is equal to 8, then x is equal to 6. That's the law of syllogism. So thank you for watching this video.